Hi, I'd like to welcome you to a very special video presentation today called Mind Map Fundamentals. We're going to be using this presentation to help explain to you how you can use mind maps to really unlock your own creativity and knowledge and put some real organization around all of these thoughts that are bouncing around your head usually based on topics that you know quite well but sometimes you may struggle with organizing them or explaining these thoughts to other people. Mind maps are an incredibly powerful tool that lets you bring some order to all these random thought impulses bouncing around your head and really make you an effective communicator and teacher and give you a serious competitive advantage not just in business but in life as well. So let's take a look at how this presentation breaks down. First we're going to be talking about the purpose of mind maps. Then we're going to get into the process of how to use mind maps, what you can use them for, how to build a mind map, a few tips on advanced mind mapping, and then we're going to give you some mind map practice exercises so that you can get up and running and start building mind maps really right at the end of this presentation and get you a really fast head start. So first let's talk about the purpose of a mind map. The main idea, like I said in the introduction, is to organize your thoughts. You've got all kinds of different thoughts uh, bouncing around your head on different topics and depending on your level of expertise, in some cases if you've spent a number of years accumulating knowledge on a specific task or idea or subject, then you probably have way more knowledge and information than you might realize in the beginning. Mind maps kind of let you expand all of that into an organized format. And it's effectively a controlled brainstorm. So let's say you've, you've really spent a lot of time over the past 5, 10, 15 years becoming an expert at, oh, I don't know, let's say the game of tennis. You probably know everything from the mental side to the physical side to specific strokes and techniques, how to prepare on game day, how to stretch, how to recover from injuries, you name it. There's probably a million things that you know and a mind map would be a great way for you to brainstorm all that information into one single view. And really it's also a form of idea generation. So if you're trying to solve a problem or if you're coming up with some new plans of what you want to do in the future, a mind map can be used to extract different ideas that may not have occurred to you yet or allow you to ultimately tap into creativity by merging both previous experience and anticipation of the future into some new ideas that you might be able to use to your advantage. So that's the general purpose of mind maps. Let's talk now about the process. The, the key thing to remember with mind mapping is that it's totally free form and that means there are no rules. Okay, The last thing you want to do is worry about creating the perfect mind map and getting it right the first time through. There are no rules. There's no real right way to create a mind map. The main thing you want to remember is the statement that I made at the very beginning during the introduction is, and, that I, and that's when I said that the purpose of a mind map is to organize your thoughts, to collect and put things into a single view and to a single place so that you can digest all the information that you already know and put it into a logical sequence. So if you're worrying about getting it right, that's going to interrupt your creative thinking. So this, this is the really cool thing about the process of mind mapping is there's absolutely no right or wrong way of doing this. You can change your mind later. You can do a, a dummy mind map now and then an hour from now change it around because you realized you were kind of on the wrong track but you got some good ideas out of it. So the thing here is you want to make sure that you uh, remember that you can organize and change anything you do when it comes to producing mind maps at a later time. The main thing is action and like I said this presentation is going to give you the high level of how these things work but ultimately get you working on mind maps so that you're just doing them and taking action and actually reaping the rewards and benefits of doing them. So next, let's talk a little bit about some basic ideas of what you can use mind maps for. And I just have a few very specific examples here, but this really could have been a 30 or 40 part bullet point list, really. So the first idea is you can create article or report outlines. So let's say you want to write a white paper for your job or for the business that you run, and you want to collect all of your thoughts or some of the most important teachables that you want to communicate to your audience. A mind map is a great place to start to extract all of the main ideas that you want to share. Another one could be to create a course or presentation. So very similar to a white paper or article report, 
This lets you bring out the major teachables, the major points that you want to communicate during a live presentation or maybe a recorded course or maybe it's going to be a course that you deliver in a boardroom or in sort of a uh, video teaching format over the course of maybe multiple days. Well, how is that all going to break down? How are the students going to learn? What is it you need to teach to them? And in which order do you need to teach them these things? In, uh, unless you know all of the ideas that you want to share, which a mind map can help you with, it's going to be very hard to put that organization of the course together. So MyMap is a great tool to help you do that. Another thing that I see people doing very effectively is to build systems for your business. So let's say right now you have kind of a, a random chaotic way of hiring outsourcers to help you with who knows what. Maybe it's managing your help desk or managing writing or maybe managing your team. And you kind of do things in an ad hoc way every time. Well imagine looking back at the past one or two or three years of things you've been doing well and not so well, and mind mapping all of that out. Maybe you have an element of your mind map that talks about things that could be improved, things that haven't worked, and then you have another element of the mind map where you look at things where you were really humming and cranking out great material and you were really effective and efficient. Now you can look at all these things that you've done in your business and pick and choose what you want to build into a system. And a system is ultimately just a series of steps and checks that somebody either personally or a computer, a system could automate for you. So mind maps a great way of looking at what works, what doesn't, and how you can automate that both with staff and with system, with um, software type of systems. Another thing is to create to-do lists or checklists. From something as simple as what you want to accomplish today, maybe you want to use a mind map to come up to come up with all the things you want to get done between now and you know 5 p.m. and the mind map can help you brainstorm all of that and then let you choose a priority to something more complex like a checklist of what you need to get done for your next major release let's say you're a software developer and you've got three months until your next release so a mind map can help you pick all of the major features, benefits, problems, uh, components that you want to develop and then allow you to think on what it's going to take to implement them, who you need to hire, how you need to test it. All of those things can be started in a mind map and then you can break it down later to then decide what you're going to do now, what you want to postpone till later. Maybe part of your mind map becomes items for a future release. This really lets you collect all of, that idea, all of those ideas into a single view. Another great way you can use mind maps is to model human interaction. So again, this could be a business system where you can use a mind map to explain how a, going back to the software example, how does a programmer interact with a marketing person or a project manager or a tester? Or how do, how do they communicate in a team model when they get together? Another thing could be human interaction when you model how a customer interacts with your help desk and then how the help desk person interacts with maybe the person that's creating the product or the software uh, or how does one customer interact with the next if you have a, a community based aspect in your in your products or in your software or whatever it may be so you can model what will eventually be flowcharts of communication starting with a mind map again these are one two three four five ideas out of probably dozens that you could come up with of what mind maps could be used for. Again, it's free form. There's no right or wrong way of doing this, but it's a great way of getting the information into one place, one view, and you can look at it. Finally, I almost missed one here, <laughs> number six, is to develop plans. So I talked about this earlier as well. If you have something that you want to achieve in your life or in business, let's let, we've talked a lot about business so far in this presentation, let's quickly uh, jump over to more of a, uh, a personal life-based thing. Let's say you want to uh, really get your act together when it comes to your health and fitness and you want to drop 30 pounds. So you have a goal, you know, I want to weigh 160 pounds by March. Well, you can develop a plan using a mind map of all the things that you know you need to be doing and maybe even make a note of some of the things that have stopped you in the past. So maybe you break your meal plan or you start eating without tracking your calories or you don't have an accountability partner to meet you at the gym and hold you accountable to doing the workouts that you need to do X number of days a week. All of those ideas of the things that you need to be doing to achieve that result can be aspects of a plan and that plan can be generated through a mind map. Plus, the, the process of going through the mind map kind of makes it exciting. Lets you brainstorm, gets you excited about the potential of what's going to happen in the future, come up with some creative new ideas to address any procrastination or, or blocks that you have in your, in your own mentality. Really, really cool stuff. Here's an example 
This training that I'm going through right now, I've kind of given you one slide and then a bunch of bullet points. I put all of this together using a mind map. So let me actually flip over and show you how I created that mind map. This is just a quick diagram, but I'll give you a live view of it here. So here's the mind map that I used in a software app called FreeMind. There's plenty of different ones that are available here. I'm going to zoom in a little bit so you can see it better on my screen. But you can see I started with the idea of I wanted to create a presentation called Mind Map Fundamentals. So my very uh, mid, my middlemost circle, I just put the word Mind Map Fundamentals. And then I started creating these nodes. In total, I had um, six child nodes of things that I wanted to talk about. And I literally just thought to myself, well, what are some fundamentals of mind maps that I've kind of learned over, the, over time by using mind maps? And I started with, well, what's the purpose? So I put my purpose ideas there, and I just created these little sub-nodes under the purpose of, well, why do I create ma mind maps? What is the purpose? I should also mention that this mind map that you're looking at right here took me probably a total of about 10 minutes. Whereas I, you know, going into this, if I wanted to create, if I wanted to start with a PowerPoint template and I said, okay, what, what, how, what do I need to teach my audience here? And I had to build slide by slide and bullet point by bullet point, it probably would have taken me hours. Whereas with a mind map, I literally just, I took the pressure off, I said, no worries, this is just free form, I can change it later. And by removing that pressure, I was able to create something that was very, very accurate as to how I wanted to teach this. And at the end of the process, I was very happy with what I had. Next, I went into uh, process, and then I started thinking, well, what can people use mind maps for? And then some stuff I haven't even taught you yet is you know, how to build a mind map, which I'm kind of showing you right now. And that's pretty much how this whole thing rolled out. So you can see, with without a mind map, I would have been hours into this process. By using this mind map, I've cut down my time. I was able to extract the best ideas from my head in a very logical, organized place. And I felt good about it because I took these chaotic thought impulses that were bouncing around my head and I put them into one digestible view. I don't even have to really, other, other than the fact that I zoomed in here, I don't even have to scroll when I'm using it in a regular view mode here. I can see my entire thought process around mind maps or any other thing I want to teach. I could teach you anything I've learned in my life using a mind map. So same idea here. This can be very, very powerful for you. So going back to our slide presentation here, let's now talk about how to build a mind map. And I kind of showed you an example of how I did it already using a piece of software. So you can use software like FreeMind, or you can go to Google and search for free mind mapping software, and you'll see a ton of different options there for Mac and PC and even other operating systems as well. I know they have some really cool ones for mobile devices or handheld devices, even things like an iPad now. So lots and lots of options. If you don't have anything, or if you're, you know, you're watching this and you don't have the ability to download anything right now, grab your notebook or grab a pen and paper and just try it out. See how it works for you. You could get a very nice mind map going and when you get to the end of this presentation, I'm going to give you some examples and practice, practice exercises. You could just use a pen and paper to go through those. Another thing you might want to do to practice your mind mapping is if you have a team meeting coming up, Let's say you work with a group of people or maybe, you know, maybe you're in a job position or you run your own business, whatever it is. Next time you get a boardroom meeting going or even a, it could be a Google Hangout or a Skype call or a conference call, you could get a little whiteboard team session going where everybody contributes to the mind map. So you start with one common goal and that becomes your middle node in the mind map. And then the, the sub nodes that kind of shoot out to the sides are just different things that you want to talk about. You can go around the room and say, what's something you want to talk about on this topic? Maybe it's how do we achieve, you know, 100% of our sales quota ahead of time this year instead of waiting till December 31st. What are some things we can do to hit it by December 1st? And people can bring their main ideas to the table and you brainstorm it using a whiteboard team session. So those are some things you can do uh, to build a mind map. Now I want to quickly mention some advanced mind mapping techniques and I don't really want to go too deep into this but this will just get you a little bit more excited to use these and really I created this aspect to just get you motivated to do them. So one thing is you can merge multiple mind maps together. So that mind map I showed you here, I'm just going to, if you just bear with me, I'm going to go back. This mind map right here, the example you've seen on the screen, is called Mind Map Fundamentals. And it shows a, um, an expanded view of everything that I can teach you about what I know about mind mapping. Well, this mind map in itself could be one single piece or one single node on a larger mind map called How to Think Creatively or How to Create high, you know, Dynamic uh, uh, 
content or how to connect, create dynamic, dynamic digital content. And I'll have lots of other things that I want to teach and mind mapping may just be one aspect of a larger course, but you can see how I could have this giant mind map where one of the nodes becomes the mind map that you're looking at right now. So that's an example of how to do it. Uh, another one is breaking down tasks into sequences. So if you, let's say you use a mind map to explain how to do something. So for example, uh, on that mind map I just showed you, one of the uh, sub nodes what, when I taught you or when I explained how to do mind mapping was I suggested to go and get some software like FreeMind to teach yourself how to do mind mapping. Well, how to use FreeMind is also a multi-step process where I would say something like, you know, step one, go to Google and search for FreeMind or search for free uh, mind mapping software. Step two, download the software. Step three, install it. Step four, create your first uh, dummy mind map. Step five, and on and on and on we go. So I might want to use a mind map to actually break down the sequence, or I could start with my mind map and realize I've reached a point here where I now need to create a checklist or a sequence or a set, a series of teachable steps. So this is kind of cool in the sense that you can use your mind map to then develop very actionable uh, checklist type of sequences which is really how things get done. That's how you ultimately communicate with people when it comes to teaching them how to get a result. And then another little kind of cool advanced mind mapping trick I wanted to mention here is interactive or shared maps. There's different pieces of software uh, that allow you and other teammates to share mind maps virtually. So kind of like the mind map you saw me building on my on my laptop here, I could use a web-based mind mapping tool to share or work on a, um, a mind map that other people also have access to virtually over the internet. So we could be logged in on a, on a teleconference talking about a mind map. I could add my little note to the mind map while my, uh, while my uh, partner or whoever I'm working with does the same. Or I can save a version of it and then they can pick it up and add to it later on. And it really expands on the uh, whole idea of creativity because then you can simulate uh, brainstorming sessions. This is really good if you have a virtual team. Uh, I, I often work with people who have teammates in Australia and UK and Canada and US and different parts of the world, Japan. Well, a mind map, a shared mind map could be a way to simulate a boardroom experience. Very, very powerful stuff. Finally, let's look at doing some mind map exercises. I'm just going to run through all the bullet points right now and then I'll give you a quick example. So one is you could do your first mind map and just break down a typical day for you, a business day. Use the mind map to create nodes and break the major aspects of your day into multiple nodes on a mind map. So one aspect of your day could be getting the kids ready in the morning. Another aspect of your day could be getting up early to do a fitness routine. Another aspect of your day could be, um, you know, your lunch meeting with friends. Another aspect could be, who knows, I, I'm running out of ideas here, <laughs> but you get the idea. Break down your typical day into multiple buckets and use a mind map as a way to practice that. How about mapping a complex task that you have already mastered? Earlier in this presentation, I talked about somebody who may have mastered the topic of tennis over the course of many, many years. You could use a mind map to extract everything you've ever learned about tennis into a single view. Maybe you're really good at uh, developing software. Maybe you're great at writing. Maybe you're a good communicator or teacher. I don't know what it is for you, but taste something that you've really spent years doing and see if you can extract all the things you've learned about that topic into a single view, into one single mind map so that somebody who has no competence in that thing could take a look at it and get a pretty good picture of what's going on inside of your head. It's an incredibly enlightening experience when you do this because obviously they're not going to know everything and every detail about what you've spent years learning, but they get a snapshot of what it's like to kind of go inside of your head. Very, very cool stuff. How about mapping out an ideal vacation? Maybe you've always wanted to go to Europe and the map out all the different things you'd want to do and the tourist attractions that you'd want to see and the, 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 the kind of people you'd want to meet and who knows what it is for you. But mapping out a vacation could be a really fun way to learn mind mapping. Mapping out your ideal business, same thing. Maybe there's a certain amount of time you want to take off or places you want to work from remotely or, or people you want to work with or the kind of money you want to make. I don't know what it is, but again, a very fun exercise that can teach you mind mapping. And then maybe just choose a personal topic that you might want to mind map. I don't know what's going on in your life right now. Sometimes you, you could use mind mapping to actually solve some personal problems that are going on. Maybe you're really dealing with something right now or you're trying to deal with something right now and you haven't figured out the best path to achieving that. A mind map might let you tap in 
to some new ideas or let you brainstorm things that maybe hadn't occurred to you before because you were locked into one pattern of thinking or one way of looking at the world or one particular perception of how things are. And as you start to mind map, you realize, well, hey, I was just locked into this one way of thinking and this mind map has actually unlocked my creativity and I'm seeing the world in a different way now. It's very interesting what can happen for you here. So let me just give you, let's just do something really fun here, a quick example of doing a mind map for a, a quick exercise. I'm going to flip over to my mind map tool now. So I'm back in my free mind software here, and I'm going to just start a new map, and I'm going to zoom it in so you can see it a little bit better. And off the top of my head, let me pick a topic that I would like to talk about. Let's talk about... Training for basketball. I've recently become a volunteer coach for my son's basketball team, and I also play basketball a couple of times a, times a week, and I've been doing that for, I'd say, 15 years. So I've got a lot of stuff that if you were just starting basketball, you had no clue anything to do with basketball, what are some things I could teach you? And I'm literally just going to go off the top of my head and show you how a mind map gets created. So one of the things I would say is learning just getting a feel for dribbling, of what, what it's like to have a ball and, and learning dribbling skills. So I would put dribbling. And what are some things about dribbling that I'd want you to know? Well, ball control. I'd want you to learn uh, about the concept of double dribble, that you can't pick your, drib your uh, put both hands on the ball and start dribbling again more than once. Uh, I'd want you to learn about uh, using both hands. <laughs> Very basic stuff here, but the kids love this stuff. And there's the start of a mind map. What's something else? Well, I'd want you to learn about proper shooting form. So shooting a basketball. And there's some. There's a, um, a little saying that we use as coaches. Beef, B E E F, which is balance, elevation, or elbow, elevation, and follow through. So I could use that to explain what that means. I would also want to do something like um, maybe shooting. Uh, practicing with both hands, same as dribbling. Now that would be more for layups, but we could get into that as well. Maybe I'll just say layups are a component of shooting. I'd also want to talk about uh, endurance. So I, I want, I'd want people to know that it's very physically tasking. If that's not obvious, you run a lot of basketball. So what are some things you could do? Well, just going for a, uh, a long, slow run is not going to help you prepare for basketball. So I would say interval training, like running stairs or running up a hill uh, in short bursts, uh, wind sprints. And actually, uh, here's another example of what I could do interval training. I might want to do another sub node. Interval training could be stair running. It could be wind sprints. So now you see an example of a sub-node inside of, so we have training for basketball, endurance, and then one of the things of endurance is an interval training, and then another, and then a sub-node of that is stair running and wind spritz. And you can see how this mind map could really start building out. Well, let's, and then here's another, th let's pick another thing we could do for endurance. I would say uh, mental training. You have to mentally prepare for getting tired, and so when it happens, you don't freak out on the basketball court, and you have some you know, mental exercise you can do to help relax your, yourself uh, deliberately. So that's just another example. I'm, I'm, I'm stretching it here, but you get the idea. And let's just pick one more for fun, and that would be um, the rules of the game. So I'd want to talk about other things. Like earlier, I talked about double dribble, so I want to maybe bring that back here, but let's also talk about traveling. Free throw line, you can't step inside the three throw line when people are taking a shot. Uh, fouls, uh, substitutions, you can't just walk on the court, you have to wait for the, uh, the buzzer to go and the ref to call you in, those kind of things. So this is, I mean, this is just the beginning of a mind map. If I really wanted to teach you basketball and everything that I've ever learned about the sport from the physical to the strategy to the rules, this would take quite a while. But again, in a single view, I could teach you what's taken me years to learn, and I'm still learning, in, a, in, in one kind of little 
conversation piece, really. And that's kind of cool. So do this for yourself. Try all those different exercises I recommended. See if you want to do it for something personal as well. Try a piece of software like FreeMind. Do it on a piece of paper. If you have a, a mobile device or an iPad, get any of the free software that's available for there. This doesn't cost you any money. And before you know it, you could have something uh, that you give away to your clients, that you share with your family, that you sell. This could help you write a book. I mean, this could be, you could use a mind map to come up with 10 or 14 or 16 chapters for a book. And then each of the 16 nodes, you can come up with each component of the chapter. There's really no limits to this. It's a great way of tapping into what's already inside of your head to pull out the creativity in your mind, to combine ideas, to combine experiences from the path, past with anticipations of what's going to happen in the future. And really, it's a very empowering experience. So I hope this presentation has given you uh, some fuel to, as motivation to get going with this and just some insights as to how this could help you in your life and in your business. Hope you enjoyed it, and we'll speak to you soon.